Hi, I'm Maya Van Rossum, the Delaware Riverkeeper. The Delaware Riverkeeper Network is presenting a series of interviews taking a critical look at the shale gas industry and its impact on our communities, our environment, and on our future. Today I'm going to be joined by Professor Anthony Ingraffia. Dr. Ingraffia is the Dwight C. Baum Professor of Engineering at Cornell University. Dr. Ingraffia will discuss industry claims that shale gas is an alternative fuel and also talk about the impacts of the drilling industry. I'd like to thank the Chestnut Hill Inn here in Milford, New Jersey for hosting us today. So thank you, Dr. Ingraffia, for meeting me on the beautiful banks of the Delaware River to talk about shale gas development where we don't have it. It's a pleasure to be home again. Great, great. And you have history here in the Delaware River watershed? Yes, I grew up about 25 miles north of where we're sitting right now on the other side, the Pennsylvania side of the river, and uh, spent a lot of my childhood swimming, fishing, and water skiing in that river. Beautiful. Have you had time to come back to the river um, in your adult years to do some fishing? Uh, farther upstream in New York State, as you know, there are portions of the Delaware that are prime trout fishing habitat, and I do spend some time up there. Yeah. So are you concerned about the uh, potential invasion of shale gas development in the upper portions of the Delaware River watershed and what it might mean for your fishing experience? Absolutely. Um, story here. Uh, we're having this conversation today precisely because of a fishing expedition. So it was about this time, five or six years ago, uh, three buddies of mine and I were coming back from a fishing trip on the Upper Delaware in New York. We're members of Trout Unlimited. And one of the guys in the car said, what's fracking? He had never heard the word before and he had read it in the uh, Ithaca newspaper. And I said, oh, I can tell you what fracking is. <laughs> that was the beginning, the very first public uh, outreach education talk I gave uh, was to the local chapter of Trout Unlimited uh, up in Cortland, New York. And that precipitated lots of other questions. Well, what is fracking? Why is it different? Where is it going? What happens when it comes to this area? Uh, does it have harmful effects? What's the magnitude of the effort? How different is it from what we've had before in New York, out west in New York? That was just the beginning. So the fact that the Delaware <laughs> precipitated my re-involvement in shale gas, I think is kind of ironic that we're sitting here next to the Delaware having this conversation today. Can you explain for the audience how shale gas development is different than other kinds of um, drilling and energy exploration projects? Sure, that's the most important question because clearly from my perspective, fracking is not the issue because we've been fracking in the US and around the world for 60 years. So it can't be fracking, although people keep wanting to use the word fracking to describe something that it isn't. Uh, it can't be natural gas because we've been using natural gas for 100 years. What's different? And the, the key word is shale. Um, the fact that they're trying now to get gas and oil out of shale is what makes the whole problem the problem. Um, we have known for many, many decades that there's gas and oil in shale formations around the world. If it was easy to get out, believe me, they would have gotten it out. <laughs> uh, the oil and gas industry is running out of product to sell. And so it's only this last ditch effort, this walking way back into the, the dark corners of the oil and gas warehouse to drag out shale as a producer of oil and gas that brings us to this conversation today. Uh, What's different is that shale uh, is a source rock. It's where oil and gas originally came from. Um, and over hundreds of millions of years, it migrated out very, very, very slowly because shale is impermeable as opposed to the traditional um, trap rocks that trap oil and gas pools. We even see these words like pool that have come down to the decades to wind up in regulations uh, and, and laws can, pertaining to oil and gas development. But because the shale is impermeable, to get the oil and gas out that's still in there, you gotta go through hell and high water. Or I should say hell and dirty water. <laughs> uh, right now, the only method that the industry has in its toolkit for getting oil and gas out of shale is to bludgeon it, to beat it to death to use what I call, as an engineer, a highly inelegant method, which is to pump millions and millions, 
hundreds of millions of gallons of uh, frac fluid into the formation in an attempt to get the rock to give up what it really doesn't want to give up. That's why I call it bludgeoning. It's Frankensteinian. You take a technology that was developed for one purpose, get oil and gas out of traditional uh, trap rocks, and apply it to a source rock, it's inelegant. It's the wrong solution that winds up producing, requiring much more water, which traditionally has been the worst thing you ever wanted to pump down a well. Most people don't understand, except people in the oil and gas industry, traditionally the way to kill a well was to pump water down. And now they're pumping water down with a few more chemicals to try to get a very small percentage, on the order of 10 or 15% of the oil and gas that's in the developable, developable area for a well is actually coming back. The rest of it's down there lost. It's inelegant, it's inefficient, it's dumb. But greed conquers all. <laughs> if, you, if your warehouse is getting empty, you got nothing else to sell, uh, you'll go to great lengths to put product uh, out in the marketplace. And that's what's going on.